Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first class um, since all of this craziness is going on in spring break. So today we have day 16. Um, if you remember before the end of um, the classes, before spring break, we started a new topic, which was day 15, and that was ANOVA, which is multiple samples of numerical data. And this is a continuation of that. So if you recall back to that day, day 15, we were looking at um, <clears throat> the multiple samples of numerical data and seeing if the means are different, right? And our ANOVA test told us if something was different, it just didn't tell us what was different. So we had, we had a new curve, right? It's a skewed right curve with an F test statistic. Uh, we're still studying the p-value as usual. We have a couple new requirements. You're gonna see all of this stuff in today's notes, but of course you could always go back to day 15 notes to refresh your memory on this. So I'm going to share the notes for today and we'll go over the notes and then in a separate video, I will talk about the um, example and work through the example. So you'll see today's notes here. We have ANOVA multiple comparisons. And today's topic is going to be Tukey's method, or it's called Tukey Kramer's method. And what this is going to do is this is the method that will tell us what means are different or which ones are the same. So if you have two means, which we wouldn't really use this for, we just use a two, uh, a two numerical test, you know, two sample numerical tests. Uh, but if you had two means and it told you that something was different, then of course, you know, the two of them are different. And, and if it didn't, then they would be the same, right? So you wouldn't need to do this. This is really for three or more means, okay? So I'm just going to take a look here. Um, of course, I want you to read through these notes. I'm not going to talk about everything. I want to talk about the main things that we need to know to move forward, okay? So when we're doing this Tukey Kramer's method, like I said, it's going to tell us which ones are different. We have um, <clears throat> here this hypothesis test. So we're gonna have mini tab output, of course, we don't have to calculate anything, but we have a little mini test to do um, for this part. Now this is like the follow-up statement to the conclusion, okay? So this is what we do when we know something is different. So this is when we reject the null hypothesis in my ANOVA test. This is the follow-up, okay? So my null is that the two means are uh, the same. That means that they're not different. And the alternative is that the two means are different. So of course, if the p value is greater than 0.05, then that means we cannot reject the null. If we can't reject the null, then that means that the two means are the same or they're statistically not different. If two means are the same, then we're going to underline them. Now, the place we're going to underline them is um, when we do that ranking the means. So you'll probably remember doing this in day 15. I said we're gonna rank the means from smallest to largest mean based on the sample means. And we were, gonna, we're going to use it in day 16. Well, here it is. So when we take those ranked means, we would underline two means that are statistically the same, okay? Um, and I'll show you in the example exactly what this looks like. So what this does, this, this little test here, this two keys test, tells us what's the same and what is different, okay? Um, so that is using the p-value approach, meaning the hypothesis test. We can also use a confidence interval method. And what we're saying is that when we subtract the two means, if the possible subtraction could equal zero, then that means that they're the same, right? That they're statistically not different. And in that case, we would underline, meaning if my CI went from negative to positive, meaning that my CI includes zero, then I'm going to say they're, they're the same. They're not different, okay? So those are the two ways we can look. So we're gonna get some output. I'll show you in the example how to get that output, but those are the two different ways. I expect you to know how to use both ways, not just one way, okay? So use the p-value or use the CI. So this is the mini tab instructions, which I'll go through when I look 
at the example with you. This is what the output looks like. I just want to show you here. Now we're going to see the same output in just a minute because this is the example I'm going to do for you. So you can see where the uh, Chuki pairwise comparison, what is it? What it does is it takes all the means and compares them two at a time. Okay, so you can see that the mean of B here, the first line, if I can get my mouse here. So this first line, the mean of B is being compared with the mean of A. Okay, so it has the difference that so gives us a little information, but we don't really need it. What we need to look at here is the CI or the P value. Now, what we want to know is what is um, not different. What is statistically the same? So if I have a p-value, like in the second one, that is greater than 0.05, we can confirm it if we want, but you don't need to do both, that my CI, look, it goes from negative to positive. So that means my CI includes zero. So that means that mean for C, which we don't even know the context because we haven't read the problem, and the mean for A are statistically the same, or you could say statistically not different. And that's what we're going to look for. Those are going to be my underlines, okay? You'll see that we have another one down below. So I just wanted you to um, just look at that real quick. I'm just going to kind of skim through here. Now you're going to see how to summarize this two keys output. You have two ways. You have that graphical display. That's my ranked means. That's what we talked about last class, and I already mentioned it this class now. Um, we rank your means by sample means, smallest to largest, and you're going to do the underlines. So the underlines mean that two means are the same, and I'm gonna show you a couple examples here. Then you'll write a conclusion. So sometimes the conclusion depends on what the problem is asking. The other time the conclusion is just something that you wanna talk about. Maybe what is the highest mean? What is the lowest mean? Is it the same or different from others? That kind of thing. So I have three examples here. Um, so look at example one. It says response variables, uh, this is kind of morbid. Pressure applied to a driver's head during a, a crash for a test and the different car types. Okay, so my factor is car type and I have levels of three, three levels, right? So that's K is equal to three in that case, okay? So we already did, we're just doing the two keys testing here and I'm giving you the output. So you can see right here that the average for the midsize um, has the lowest average um, pressure applied to driver's head. The full is in the middle, the compact has the greatest, okay? So what you can see here is that the mid and the full average is underlined, right? That means that they're statistically the same. So statistically the same means everything we've just already been talking about all throughout the whole course so far, that it's not different enough to say it's different, right? They're not gonna exactly be the same, but statistically the same, meaning that they're close enough um, that we can call them the same. So that's what this is indicating by having those underlined, that those are the same and that the compact is different. So you can see the conclusion that is made based on that. Now, if you look at example two, you can see there's no underlines. That means that they're all statistically different. Again, you're gonna make just some general conclusion statement. I'm not really picky on it. I just like to have something, right? So you could talk about the lowest, the highest mean, and I, I like you to talk about if it's statistically the same or different, right? Because that's what we're testing. Again, here in example three, you can see that mean four and mean two are statistically the same, and then mean one and mean four are statistically the same. So you see how the underline works so it doesn't like overlap? Because mean one and mean two are not the same. That's from the two keys, okay? So um, you don't wanna just make one straight line from one to two. It's four and two are the same and one and four are the same. Now this isn't like a logic class where you say, well then one and two are the same. It doesn't work that way, okay, in statistics. So you'll just make, um, you can read the conclusion here and make some sort of conclusion about that. I also want to make a note that we have a shortened test process for ANOVA. I know we did the longer test process last class. We're shortening it down. So when we look at an ANOVA test process, I need you just to let me know what the response variable is, the factor, and how many levels, the goal. Remember the goal is always the same if the factor affects the variable. My method is that um, all the means are the same, 
for my null and my alternative is at least one's different. You don't need to include alpha. You don't need to include what curve you're on and all of that. So we're cutting some of that stuff out. I told you in the beginning of the semester, we'd start cutting stuff out and here it is. My sample step is the same as always. My mini tab output, my requirement check. Now remember my requirement. Um, I have to check for normality in this one, and I have to check for that equal variance in this one, okay? If you don't remember those, go back to the day 15 notes and look those up, okay? <clears throat> Here in my results, I'm going to do the same thing I always do, report my F-test statistic, my degrees of freedom, and my p-value. Here I have my conclusion, um, and I'm just talking about, okay, my 5% level of significance the sample does or does not provide evidence, to say that the factor affects the variable, okay? Now, I would say plus there's a follow-up, which is the two keys comparison if we reject the null, okay? So that's where that's gonna come in. So that's the gist of today's notes for most part. I would like you to read through them. And um, once you do that, I will be in a chat um, for the second hour of class to answer any questions. Um, and you can work on your daily at that time, but I'm going to stop this video and I will make a new one for the uh, example. Okay. All right. I'll see you in a minute.